G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is a Browning Automatic Rifle, Model 1918A2, and I think the M stands for model, right? That would make sense. And I'll be referring to this as a bar for the rest of the video, because I don't want to say Browning Automatic Rifle, it'll just be too long. Anyways, so if you're looking at this thing, and you're thinking to yourself, hey, that looks familiar, if you've ever played the Dead Money DLC from New Vegas, you basically get a bar in the form of an automatic rifle, um, it's got a couple of things like a, a, a bipod and a carry handle on it. You can attach those later, we'll get to that in a second. But it had a pistol grip as well. This one just has the standard rifle grip. And if we cast the clocks a little bit forward, we've got Fallout 4's combat rifles, which I guess have some of the design elements here. They look fairly similar, but obviously the real deal looks a whole lot better. It helps that it's not covered in Bethesda textures either. So there you go. Alright, so getting into the attachments, obviously this thing having the automatic in its namesake, you can make this thing automatic. Now the fire rate here is 90, which is a lot. It's a it's a big, big, big fire rate. And if we use this thing, there's the sounds by the way. Did I mention it's got custom sounds and animations? Well, it does. They're good. We'll get to those in a second. But that's how fast this thing fires. If you feel like that is much too fast, what you can do is slow the rate of fire down. That'll slow your rate of fire down as well as increase accuracy, so that'll be good for, I guess, VATS usage, and we'll get to VATS in just a second, but that makes it fire a little bit more like an authentic bar wood, so that'll be good. Uh, for performance reasons, I'm going to leave this on fire mode A mode, which will increase it back to 90, but we'll definitely grab a, basically a naked bar, and then what we'll do is we'll leave it basically looking stock, but then we'll crank up the damage and it'll be unreal. We'll get to that in a moment. But we'll start off with the, uh, wait, we've done the receivers. We'll move on to the barrels. So we've got the standard barrel on right now, and it does good in terms of range and accuracy. If you chuck on the short ones, it'll be slightly more VAT sufficient. So if you want to use this thing in VAT somewhat, you can get away with using the uh, short barrels. Keep in mind that this will decrease your VAT accuracy at range significantly, so you have to be very close to actually make any use out of this. The commando barrel gives you that less so, but it also increases the hip for accuracy, so if you want a short barreled uh, bar, you can get away with using that, but I think for all standard combat applications, a, a standard barrel would be the one to use. We'll change it up with the barrels when we get other versions of this weapon, but we'll leave this one as standard. Now, funnily enough, it follows the combat rifle's idea on how to get stock, so you can have a full stock for the better recall, add a little bit of greebling, there's some padding with the uh, marksman stock and with a shoulder pad and the cheek thing for you put your cheeks on when you're aiming down sights and then recoil compensating, there you go. Uh, basically, we want to chuck on that because this thing kicking like a mule firing through a weight in an automatic fashion would be the best idea. Now you can chuck on a mag up to 45 rounds, if that's too much, 35 rounds, but we'll chuck on that. It looks kind of silly, but it is what it is, and for performance reasons, that's probably going to be the best one. And you got a bunch of sights, so you can keep the standard sights if you want. You can fold this little thing up here. You can barely bloody see through it, but it looks great, doesn't it? You can have an ACOG, aim point, and a bunch of other reflex sights, which I'll just quickly scroll through including a Seymour Skinner. Interesting. And what I want to do is chuck an American sight onto this. So we'll go for the Aerotech, Tech, and then I guess we'll move on after I shoot you the rest of these. Very nice. Also, if you're looking at these, you'll actually say, or you'll see that they've got a 1.5 time zoom, and you want to actually keep that in the back of your mind for later. But for now, we're going with muzzles. You can decrease the range, make the recoil a little bit better if you want to use a muzzle brake or a compensator, but a silencer would be the way to go. Funnily enough, that one's referred to as a silencer, that one's a suppressor. Interesting. Let's go, let's back the suppressor. So the ace operator will increase our damage with that slightly more, which is nice, and we can make the ammo counters. So this will be on the site. There's a couple of places where you can chuck ammo counters if we scroll down here. This is one for the rear, as you can tell with uh, here, and you can get one on the side here. You can actually go all out and get three, one on the side, one on the side, one on the rear, but that's kind of overkill and we won't do that. Let's just get one on the side here, and you can have rifle ammo or pistol ammo or shotgun ammo, depending on what you're using. We'll chuck on rifle ammo, that makes sense, and you'll notice that it chucked a little bit of a thing there. That'll give you a live ammo counter, so if you want to use this thing 
without using a heads up display you can do that and you can keep track of your ammo at the same time without taking your eyes from off the middle of the screen like it matters all that much anyways and let's go again and chuck some sights on the uh on the thing so like i said before going on about the standard ranges or whatever uh, if you chuck on a thing that's too high It'll be too big, too small, you can't see it, so you've got to find one that is uh, designated to your size of sight. So make sure you pay attention to which thing you equip with a zoom. And we'll move on from that. You can chuck on the accessories, a bipod, a carrying handle, or both. This doesn't penalize weight, which is nice. It's just there if you want it, a little bit of aesthetical thing, so we'll definitely do that. Like that option. And you can chuck on glow sights, which will make the iron sight glowing we're not going to be aiming through that but it'll statistically increase our accuracy a little bit so that'll make it slightly better in vats if we want and there's an ammo count for the rear and it'll be on the back right there it's kind of overkill to have three counters on a weapon but if you want to do it you've got the option legendary effect is there if you need and the damage slider i've already mentioned that we'll not use it on this one all right i think that's it we'll make a few more and then we'll see you in gunners plaza this weapon is injected onto leveled lists, so you'll find it in enemies, you'll find it in vendors, and a special hint given by the mod maker is you'll find it on the last guard of Fort Hagen. So if you've already done the mission where you kill Kalog, probably check the vendors and maybe enemies and you'll find it eventually. Okay, so here we are inside of Gunners Plaza once again, the classic standard place. Now, oops, there we go. There's reload animation, by the way, in the charging handle thing. If I had the tactical reload enabled, I wouldn't have to worry about that. There's a few problems with the uh, ammo counter framework, because when you reload the game, it might take wrong numbers. That might show up. You can easily fix that by unequipping and re-equipping the weapon. And, yeah, that's how you fix that. When you sprint, it looks like that. It's not too showy. It doesn't look like you're booking it entirely. But that's what the bar looks like in third person. Kind of feels like sacrilege to make this weapon have a look kooky with all these attachments. Here's a short-barreled one with a reflex for use in vats. Uh, keep in mind that this thing's got a calibrated receiver. Um, there are no advanced receivers here, so we want to use this thing specifically in vats the most to get the most damage with the criticals. This is a one. It's got a ACOG scope and a suppressor, a long-ass barrel. And the ACOG scope, unfortunately, doesn't actually zoom in all that much. It's only a 25 times zoom, but we've aligned the uh, little ammo counter to work with that. So we don't have to watch, we don't have to dart our eyes to the corner of the screen to figure out how much ammo we've got left. And here's the uh, stock looking one with the beefed up damage. This one's probably going to be the most fun to use because it's, it's awesome. Anyways, let's get started and what we'll do... Is we'll circle around this way sprinting and then we'll try to chop these gunners down before they even see us and you'll also note how i've got some battlefield one kill sounds because i can felt kind of appropriate it's unfortunate we don't have the stopping power to uh, <laughs> pump the rounds through those uh small pillars there but that's okay and oh hello gonna private eh let's hit you we'll just bash him over the head so I can show off the uh, animations for bashing there. Looks like the Stealth Commando dream is over. Let's fire this thing in the automatic way. Alright, enough of this trying to sneak around. Let's go loud and proud here. And this thing sounds so much better. Uh, like I said before, we're basically listening to the combat rifle suppress animations when this thing's got a suppressor, which is a little bit of a shame. But uh, when you've got this thing... It, what is that? Interesting. Um, yeah, when you've got this thing without a suppressor, so much better. And when we're firing this thing with an automatic with the slower fire rate style, when it hits as hard as it does or will do, well, it's going to be unreal. I can't wait to use that one, but we'll keep using this one for now. We're in danger still. And the turrets above have forgiven me, and now we're back into caution. Now, I did want to use this thing in VATS, and I intend to do that. We'll get a bit of a gun fu thing happening. How many targets can we see here? Quite a lot. These turrets will be an easy three to start off with. Yep, they'll do. And then, 
we'll get crits on every other shot here. Now, obviously, this probably won't kill all of them. It'll weaken them significantly. But looking at the VATS thing there, we actually aren't using a ton of AP per shot there. And thanks to Gunfu, the rest of these shots will be criticals. So we'll get a bunch of weakening here. Probably could have doubled up on some of the shots here just to get some confirmed kills, but it is what it is. Didn't like that, did ya? She's pissed off. Didn't like that. So we can easily finish off the rest of them with some cheeky little headshots. And then after we're done with this, we'll move on to our suppressed long-barreled one. Jack and there's a bounty on me. Stop that. I like bashing in Fallout 4. Occasionally you get criticals and they do a whole lot of damage. Let's get a nice little zoom in here. Hang on, you're firing an anti-material rifle at me. Stop that. See, this is why we wear plate carriers now, because it leaves a mark. We gotta heal from the... the... <laughs> the that. You got, you got a Beretta ARX 160. That's cool. If I had done a weapon mod video on that, that's a good one. Let's get a bash kill here, because we can. There we go. And I think that's it. And if we're lucky, we might get in a caution so we can get some snipes on these last couple of people. There we go. There's caution. There we go. One shot, one kill there. Would have been if uh, you your head wasn't as bulletproof as it was. See? No one's no one's disparaging the gunners for being thick. It's actually tactically advantageous for them. If that guy wants to put his head where my sights are, then that's fine. All right, that's good as. And we haven't used this thing uh, stock yet, so we'll be looking to do that in just a second. But for now, that's it for Gunners Plaza, and this thing definitely doing some pretty good work. Having fun with it so far, so let's continue the killing spree, eh? Alright, looks like there's a bit of a kerfuffle going on right there. But we're about to get some major stealth commandoing work done. This will be as good as it used to be because multipliers... Hang on, he's still pissed off at something. Uh, I'd like to scope in and see what we can get. Is that a rust devil? Well, we'll just shoot at him. There we go. No sneak crits just yet. And just remember, he's sort of in an aggro mood, so he'll be after me as soon as he's done with these robots. Yep. Alright, party started now. And we might be getting little bits of damage right now, but when he gets closer, that'll start getting up rapidly. Oh yeah. This is every shot that's getting a 4.4 times multiplier. This guy's got 30,000 health. So... It's like if the Scorch Beast Queen had like 5,000 less health and no damage reduction. Oh, could have been great. Also, you'll note in the corner there that like the icon for this is like a Garand or something. So I think the uh, the game's confused on which historical weapon we're using. So is that a Deadeye Gauss rifle? It is actually. You know what the Deadeye thing does? This is a Far Harbor thing. It time slows down when you're aiming down sights. That's good on a Gauss rifle. I'd use that if I was playing with non, like, modern weapons. <laughs> Alright, let's move on. We'll, we'll go shoot something else. Okay, let's continue the killing spree, but we'll do a spot of sniping. There goes one. And if we can pick off all these gunners before they piss off the mutants back there, then that would be a good idea. But generally, I kind of draw these parties into each other, and I think they're definitely on now. If we can get a couple of cheeky shots through the doors and windows that would be good there was a couple of nice crits there that worked out and i don't know maybe we can take out these super mutants with these multipliers we'll sort of back off a little bit because they will start start advancing now uh the big guy we'll try to deal with a little bit later but that worked oh wait it died that thing had Ooh, did he get physics to death he might have actually well, that makes my job a lot easier. That means i got to deal with a bunch of extra super mutant warlords. You know what? These guys are tanky. Uh, fun fact about these guys, they don't stop scaling like you. Uh, at a certain level, these guys, their health will overtake a super mutant behemoth. And it, you can feel it. What on earth happened? Oh, 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 he ran into this. All right. Well, I'm using it as a shield now. How well is this going to work? 
Not very well. I can't fire through it and it kind of falls apart. Alright, you know what? Let's get some bats work done here because these guys kind of deserve it. Oh, listen to that thing go off. That's so good. Oh. The slowed down, head popping, final burst in bats there. That's great. Love that. As a nice counter to the 50% damage penalty, getting that extra 90% damage on this makes it feel that good. Love it. Obviously, from back here, it's not going to be as useful, so we'll quickly move a little bit forward. Can't see a thing. We can aim in third person instead. Let's do that for a bit. There we go. These headshots, they feel so great. You know what? This reminds me of using a good old-fashioned Scar H. And where are you going? Oh, yeah, these, these raiders sort of just run off. Yeah, it feels like using a Scar H back in Battlefield 4. That was my favorite weapon. Loved that. You know, I've tried every single Scar mod, and it's like Seymour Skinner, and, like, no one can get the splices right. It just doesn't feel as good as it felt back in Battlefield, I'll tell you that much. And you're injured somehow, so I'm going to snipe you. That didn't work as well as I was hoping, so I think we ought to creep a little bit closer here. We spotted, not quite. There's just some panic fire from the masses. Managed to shoot that guy on the arm just in the right spot to make him explode. There goes another. There you go. That one's only a weakling because he got taken out in a couple of shots. And we can see them. Should have chucked a longer scope on in retrospect because I mean we've got the we've, we've got the options, so I guess there's no reason not to. Let's get another Vats round going here. Let's see. Ooh, okay, what I might do here is we'll manipulate gun through so I can get at least one big guaranteed crit spam kill, you know? And, I mean, I may as well keep spamming the crits anyway, but every other shot now that I make after these three ones will be critical. So, I guess we can use gun through just to get as much damage from this as possible. But maybe we want to do next is just ditch the one without the suppressor. Use the one with the suppressor so we can utilize uh, Ace Operator to go with that. Ah, that's a fitting finish for a Super Mutant, I'll tell you that much. Didn't have much, much brains in the first place, though, I reckon. If we can zero in and get these headshots, then that'd be great. I'm actually considering doing a little bit of jet right now. That's okay. Winners don't do drugs. We don't need performance enhancers like that. Okay, our AP is back. Yeah, yeah, you can smash me all you want, mate. This plate carrier is stopping all of that nonsense. And... Yeah, okay. Let's just reload, pop a fresh mag in. We'll go headshot on you. Shot on you. And we'll put the rest into you. So even with a longer barrel and sort of a scope, it's not... You don't actually get that much less in the way of shots per VATS round. So that's interesting. If Maybe if you're going to hyper-optimize, you may as well just use a standard barrel anyway. I think the only thing really penalizing us here might be the ACOG scope. And one more crit, please. I'm wondering if you actually get more damage because you stack the criticals... I think you're a bit late, mysterious stranger. Useless. Unless he, like, spawned and killed him as soon as he appeared. But I'm thinking maybe what you could do with Gunfu instead of getting those guaranteed criticals, which I guess... Or the redemption. Yeah, that'll do. That's actually given us a crit, which means... Oh, uh, we might be able to get a trifecta here. Let's see. Uh, I don't see him around. Nah. No one gets that lucky thrice, right? Stupid humans. No, I didn't bring race into this, but now that you mention it. There we go. That's how you deal with super mutants. You shoot them into the head till they've got no more heads. I like it when they scream. That's music to my ears. Alright, I think we're almost done with this lot, and we kind of, like, cheese the giant final boss. He tripped on some traffic <laughs> hazards. You know what? They are hazards. I don't think anyone can dispute that now, but 
perhaps a little bit more anticlimactic. With all of the weapon videos I've done and all the times I've went to kill him, never have I ever seen such an occurrence. Let's get some crits going here, or at least some generation of crits, right? Oh, that's good. You'll note, I mean, if you're watching the VATS AP thing there, there's like a, a shot that only used one bullet, but the game compensated by bringing down the AP amount used in that shot just to the one. It's elegant. Ah, oh, they don't make fallouts like they used to. We had New Vegas, then we had Fallout 4 made by Todd, which was like mostly good. Then the writers got involved and <laughs> they made the Institute. <laughs> Um, but other than that, everything was pretty good, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's just get rid get rid of the lead rider. Bring in the Obsidian team that made New Vegas. They know what they're doing. And whoever wrote the the DLCs in New Vegas with Ulysses and the gang, that was really compelling. We need more of that. Okay, since we didn't get to fight the other giant super mutant behemoth, we're going to fight the Lobsterman instead, who resides in this lake. There's a Lake Mead monster, his name is Craze Milo Hunter, but we just call him Lobster Man. That's his nickname. And we're in caution right now. He's a perceptive bloke, so he's going to find us fairly quickly. So we've got to keep our distance here a little bit. And he, he won't get to us. Because if he does, he'll initiate combat and he hits hard. He'll kill you much faster than any giant super mutant behemoth would. He can spit at ya. He's got much nasty projectiles, and the perception stat of his makes him a hard target to kill with stealth commandoing. So we gotta be fairly uh, unaggressive here compared to what we were against old mate. But luckily, it's worked for us so far. We can stagger this guy still, so we can potentially stun lock him if we get a couple of lucky hits during a mag dump, and we've actually uh, got him into a state of thing that and he's just he just spits at you from kind of like where you are in general and he's being really standoffish right now tell you what we've been pretty lucky so far so let's open this up a little bit let's use oh that was close lucky i moved just then let's open this fight up a little bit using vats criticals and also a non-suppressed weapon we'll, we'll start this off with a We'll finish this off with a little bit more tension in the air, I suppose. And with all of that, we've got three crits ready to go pretty much right away, which is good stuff. If we get into Nerd Rage here, we can smash those criticals out and do a whole ton of damage. But for now, he's down there, so all we need to do is dance and dodge from side to side, and he'll never hit us. But when he does, you'll know it. I think one more will get me down in a Nerd Rage. Not quite. All right. He's going to kill me if he hits me next. That was very close. Loping for a few lucky staggers here. I'll go for some criticals for those extra points of damage. There we go. There's a stagger. That's a couple of extra easy shots. We'll go for another one. Ooh. It's going down to the wire here. That unnamed thing. A little bit optimistic trying to slip back into caution. There we go. And a quick little level up there means we weren't wounded at all during that fight. And I think that is about it for the bar. And I've had a fantastic time with this weapon. So if you want to see this thing in your game, uh, what you want to do is uh, head to the description. There'll be a link down there for PC. If I can't find this mod on Xbox, there will be an alternative to get bars. And also, I should mention that this thing is injected into the... Uh, the leveled list, so you'll find it on enemies, but I'll probably put a little note in that a little bit later on. And with blackface, you can just ignore that. There we go, fixed it, it's fine. Anyways, so if you want to see this, look in the description. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I'm out of here. Definitely recommend this one.